Hello, this is Greg Shields with Real Time Publishers, and I want to spend a couple of minutes showing you some of the settings that are talked about in this tech tip. You know, it's really not that hard to create a VDI infrastructure if you use Microsoft Hyper-V and Remote Desktop Services. In fact, in this article, I argue that you can use these two tools to create a single server VDI solution for some problem applications that you may have. If you want, you might take a look at this document called Deploying Virtual Desktop Pools Using Remote Desktop Web Access. It's a step-by-step -step guide that's provided by Microsoft, and it gives you some of the details that aren't in my article about how to actually set up this environment. I want to spend a little bit of time, however, showing you what some of these configurations are so that you can get an idea of how you might create your own single server VDI solution. First, I want to show you Server Manager here. And in Server Manager, you can see that we have the Remote Desktop Services role installed. And if I click Add Role Services, you'll see that three of the role services have actually been installed to this server. Remote Desktop Session Host, or what we used to think of as Terminal Server. Remote Desktop Connection Broker, this is the orchestration piece. And also Remote Desktop Web Access, which is the website that the users will actually use to connect into their remote desktops. Now you'll notice that Remote Desktop Virtualization Host is not installed to this server. And in the single server scenario, you would absolutely install this. For the reasons of resources and the available processing power that I have, I've actually installed install the virtualization host to a different server, this server here, server 1. Now you don't necessarily have to do this, but this illustrates that you can actually split these role services off onto different servers, or you can consolidate them down into a single server. These four role services work together to create what is essentially your VDI environment. Now I told you in the article that there are three major steps to connecting these role services and making each role service aware of the other. Let's go through those three steps now. I've already configured the three steps. I just want to show you what these, these configurations look like so you can be aware in your own environment. You'll see here under Local Users and Groups, the first thing that we need to do is actually click on Groups and look here under TS Web Access Computers. We need to populate this group with the computers that are TS Web Access Computers in our environment. In the case of this example, Server 3 is that TS Web Access Computer. I'll hit the Cancel button here. The next step you need to do is actually configure TS Web Access. Now you can get there by clicking on Start and Administrative Tools and Remote Desktop Services and Remote Desktop Web Access Configuration. But what that really does is actually launch a browser that connects you to your TS Web Access website. I've already got that up here. I want to log in with my domain and username, contoso slash administrator and my password, and I'm going to hit the Sign In button here. If I'm an administrator, I'll be able to actually manage the configuration of this TS Web Access site. If I'm not an administrator, I'll only have the ability to view and connect to different uh, remote apps and remote desktops through this website. And you'll see that I've successfully logged on. You'll notice that I have no remote app programs here, but I do need to click to the configuration node to actually enter in the configuration for this web app server. You'll see that under select the source to use, I want to connect to an RD connection broker server, and then that server name is actually localhost. I've already put those in here. What that says is that I'm going to be using an RD connection broker to actually connect my users to their remote app programs and remote desktop. Once we've done that, the third thing we need to do is actually go and configure the virtual desktops. And we can do that here within the configure virtual desktops wizard that's found under remote desktop connection manager. And you'll see over here, I'm going to click the link for Configure Virtual Desktops, and that brings up this wizard. We need to go through and actually enter in all the configurations for this wizard. I'll click the next button here. You'll see that we need to enter in an RD virtualization host, which is essentially a, a Hyper-V server that uh, will operate hosting our virtual desktops. We already have Server 1 in here that is configured as that RD virtualization host server. Click the next button here, and I need to configure redirection settings. Remember that an RD session host, or a, what used to be thought of as a terminal server, is used to actually get the users to their virtual desktops. And once that session host has been configured in redirection mode, we don't really use it with remote apps anymore. We only, we only use it at this point for remote desktops. We've already configured server3.contoso.com in here for that server, but I can enter it in here if I want to reconfigure that server. If we have earlier versions of the remote desktop client, we can redirect to those earlier RDC versions as well. And you'll see down here I want to set automatic configuration so that I automatically configure this server for redirection. If I'm using this as part of a farm of remote desktop session host servers, I won't be able to automatically configure. I'll have to manually configure that using a different process. But because I have a single server, I can use this automatic configuration wizard. I'll click the next button here. And it does a couple of things, and it allows me to specify an RD Web Access server. If you've already done that, which we already have, it'll actually already been specified for this wizard. I click the next button here, 
It allows me to review my selections and hit the Apply button, and actually complete the configurations of this virtual desktops wizard. Now, I mentioned also in the article that you'll see this link here at the bottom in the last page that says, do you want to assign a personal virtual desktop? Now we are creating in this environment a set of pooled virtual desktops. And pooled virtual desktops are not one-to-one -one linked to particular users. And because we're doing that, we don't necessarily want to create personal virtual desktops at this time. You, you may want to at some point in the future, but not for the purposes of this example. I'll click the Finish button here, and that completes the steps that we need to do to connect the various components together. In the next step, I want to show you how virtual desktops are created and talk a little bit more about differencing disks.